Hi, I'm Kurt, and on this episode of Grandworks, I compare three popular security camera software suites, ZoneMinder, iSpy, and Blue Iris. Stay tuned. I'm going to use the same camera for all test purposes. It's a Lorex LNB4421 set up in our turtle yard. Uh, long story on that. We definitely need to know the IP, and we may need to know the video resolution. That's 4 megapixel, or roughly twice HD. We also might need to know the RTSP URL. Hopefully not though. I'll start out with ZoneMinder, which is fully open source and runs exclusively on Linux. I installed it on Ubuntu 16.04 LTS using the PPA. If you aren't comfortable with all that, then ZoneMinder isn't for you since, well, that's the trivial part. You'll see what I mean. ZoneMinder works as a web app. I start by adding a new monitor, which I assume is a camera. Oh, and there's an OnVIF link. That's promising, since my camera does support it. Probin, probin, probin. Okay, it actually found all five of my cameras, including the super cheap Foscab one. Nice. Let's try out 61, which is the turtle yard, and enter in my setup credentials. Well, this is getting better and better. It actually found both of my camera streams and is allowing me to choose between them. Let's do the 4 megapixel MP4 stream first. Wow, it got the RTSP URL, color space, and pixel dimensions automatically. I am so far very impressed. So now let's see what our live feed looks like. Uh, huh, that's not good. There's nothing at all there. Maybe it's because I'm in low bandwidth mode? Nope. Huh. Okay, well, this is an open source Linux app, so time to hit the log files. You knew I was coming to this. Now these errors don't directly talk about not being able to view the live feed, but they are legit errors, and they do at least mention streaming. So let's try going to this linked web page. Okay, I'm not using IE, so it's not the first one. The second option directly talks about not being able to view streams and is about the Apache config. I see it also mentions Debian based distros. Yeah, let's give this a try. Copy that string off and go to options. <laughs> oh great, a web view of what is clearly a config file with all of the environment variable style config keys. Right. I see the path ZMS that they were talking about in the logs and the FAQ. Paste and save. You know, if this is the fix, then there's no excuse for that to not be part of the PPA installation procedure instead of buried in some obscure FAQ. Literally just, when installing via the Ubuntu PPA, go to the options of path and replace the path ZMS string with this string. It should absolutely be part of the install instructions. And clearly it was the fix. Good. That's uh, not an auspicious start though. Having to comb through the logs and visit a random FAQ really shouldn't be part of just adding a camera. Next up, I want to create a zone or two to mask out the area where I want to be alerted if there's any motion. There are areas on all of my cameras where I expect to see movement that I don't care at all about. But where in the world is the zone editor in ZoneMinder? I mean, it's even in the name. Ah, all of these links on the numbers mean something. Good to know. Apparently ZoneMinder has a default zone that includes the entire image. That image, by the way, cannot be scaled down to fit in the browser window, like it can in the live feed. So I delete the default zone and create a new one to customize. The zones are polygons with straight lines connected by movable vertices. Just find those points and move them around. There's a table of the numbered points below the image. To add a new vertex to the zone polygon, just click on the plus link corresponding with the numbered point that will precede your new point. I keep having to scale up and scale down my browser window to compromise between being able to see what I'm doing and still see what the text says. All in all, I do think this concept is reasonably slick, and I wish that the other software packages gave a polygon option as well. It could definitely use a lot of polish though. Oh, and setting the preset isn't an optional step. That is, it won't default to default, but rather it will just let you not save the zone until you make some choice. Well, let's give this a try. I'll walk around in the turtle yard and hopefully I'll be detected and ZoneMinder will trigger recording. Huh, nope. There's nothing in the events link and nothing in the timeline. What am I missing? I see that there's a function setting for the camera, but looking at the choices, they make little sense. Mo decked, no decked, mo cord, <laughs> what? Time to break down and actually read the documentation, I guess. Ah, here we go. Functions. Oh, jeez. Modet is motion detection. Are you kidding me? 
there is no good reason whatsoever to arbitrarily truncate that name in the UI. Okay, sure, if you have a config variable or a setting deep in the code, then you might want to avoid spaces and extra letters. I mean, that's pretty common. But this is the user-facing UI. This is just ridiculous. But okay, let's try out Modect first. So I took a walk in the turtle yard off camera, and now let's try hitting refresh and voila, there's a new event link. It looks like it doesn't detect me until I'm relatively close, so I'll have to adjust the detection size. That's gonna be a common task with any motion detection software though. Oh, I like this timeline. It shows the length of the recording, but it also shows just how many detection points or objects it sees. Nice. Let's try out MoCord as an alternative. In the unnecessarily truncated verbiage of ZoneMinder, that would mean a continuous recording with motion detection alarms. Note that it doesn't show any object rectangles or motion detection lines in the live view, although it will change the status to a red alarm if you look closely. When viewing the event, I'm not seeing any obvious way to know when there's an alert. There is probably a way though, so maybe some more experimentation or document reading will unearth the way. The timeline view definitely shows it. Yeah, ZoneMinder really should have the timeline front and center since it's one of their better features. Okay, now that I'm getting detected, I'd like to be notified on my iPhone whenever there's an alert. But how? Is it a filter? I mean, probably. There are clearly events of some sort that can all trigger actions. This looks like with a lot of reading, a lot of experimentation, and a lot of work, it could be pretty powerful. Assuming that I did get this working, and that's kind of a big assumption, is there an app that will work with it? Turns out, yes. The ZM Ninja app is five bucks, and it looks to be a really first-class modern remote surveillance app. It has an intuitive UI in a way that is precisely opposite of ZoneMinder itself. And that's where I'm gonna stop, because it's clear at this point that ZoneMinder isn't truly a competitor to either iSpy or Blue Iris, in the conventional sense. Are you a diehard Linux fan who wouldn't even consider having wind blows on any of your boxes? If so, then what you've seen so far is pretty much par for the course. Yeah, you have to RTFM and spend a lot of time searching forums and logs and very likely edit more than a few config files, but you likely do that already, right? ZoneMinder is as purely open source Linux as you can get. It's super powerful and almost infinitely flexible and configurable. It'll very likely do anything you need it to do, eventually. But you need to be hardcore dedicated to get to that level, since ZoneMinder will not make it easy for you. And that's the key. If you have no qualms about running Windows, then ZoneMinder is just not going to be worth the time and effort when there are alternative solutions that are just as powerful, but still much easier to use. All that said, I may revisit ZoneMinder in a future episode to focus on using ZM Ninja, maybe on the desktop, or maybe even an alternative skin like the Arc console. Maybe one or both of those would bring ZoneMinder into the realm of normal people. We'll see. Next up is iSpy, which is Windows only, but is also fully open source, believe it or not. Just install and run. Let's start by clicking the big add button. And since we know OnVIF works, that's a good choice. And there are my cameras, nice. Enter in my username and password, click next and... Wait, what? What do you mean you can't connect? Uh, maybe the IP camera wizard will get me going? There is quite a list of cameras, but my very specific one isn't there, so let's just go with Lorex in general. Enter in my username and password again, and I happen to know that my primary channel is one. And there we go. Those are my two streams, although the MJPEG one looks a bit unconventional. It wants me to confirm the URL, so let's do that. Hmm, so does that mean that iSpy thinks that neither are valid? Maybe I'll try scanning the camera for more options. Okay, those are all options that I just don't care about at all. I'll have to say that I'm surprised as heck that adding a camera to iSpy is proven to be very notably more difficult than doing the same even in ZoneMinder. That kind of blows me away. So just forget it. We'll add our camera manually using all the specifications that we got earlier. That was definitely not a good start. But now that my camera is added, I do see a pretty conventional dialog box with further settings. There's the motion detection tab. <laughs> no obscure code words needed. I guess I would need to read up on the advantages and disadvantages of the different use detectors, but at least there is a default choice selected. 
And there's the zone editor. Just rectangles, it appears. I mean, that's easy enough to do. It's not quite as powerful as the zone minder polygons, but the end result is similar, and it is much easier to use. I see the alerts tab and recording tabs, and a few more. Let's mostly just keep those on the defaults for now. And there we go, our camera is added and we can view it live. That OnVIF and IP Camera Wizard debacle was an unwelcome surprise, but otherwise this was a reasonably easy way to add in a camera. With just the default selected, let's see what works and what we'll need further investigation. It started to detect objects in motion, and there it started recording, according to the red ball in the upper right corner. I want to say that I'm impressed that it was this easy, except that, well, maybe my expectations were lowered so drastically because I looked at ZoneMinder first. Maybe I need to recalibrate my expectations and just assume that it darn well better work this easily up front. And there's the event in the timeline, looking good. So let's see what this event looks like. Uh, what? What? You can't view recorded events in iSpy by default? <laughs> What's up with that? I utterly flabbergasted. Okay, fine. I'll download the VLC zip file and we'll go from there. Hmm. Coming back to iSpy, I see this dialog saying that to access the camera even locally, I need an iSpy Connect account. This is getting more and more bizarre. Oh well, it's a free account, so let's just do that. I guess I don't care about all this quite yet, so let's go back to iSpy itself and enter in my new username and password. I do not want any UPnP auto configuration since any remote access definitely needs to be secure, and I don't trust auto configuration. Oh, and there's my motion detected event available on iSpyConnect.com. That seems unlikely to be really remote though. It's maybe connecting to a local web server? I'll have to investigate further. Just this is all weird. Let's try the VLC route that was originally suggested since it doesn't appear to be related to the iSpyConnect account at all. I can't find any way of doing the installation directly in iSpy like you'd expect, so I broke down and read some instructions. Apparently I need to extract that VLC zip file into the right iSpy directory. Hmm, it's still giving me that same error though. Maybe the problem is that Windows extracted the VLC zip file into its own folder, so I'll try moving everything up to its parent folder. Trying again. And it works! Oh, there's a handy timeline with a detection bar graph. That's much better than the remote view. But there's just no excuse for it to be that much of a pain to install VLC when it's a fundamental part of iSpy. But at least when it is installed properly, it works like you'd expect. You know, small favors and all that. Let's see how easy it is to adjust the motion detection algorithm to detect me earlier on in the test and maybe at a farther distance. Right click on the camera's live view and select edit. I was searching for something called settings or config or preferences or similar to that, but nope, it's edit. Going to the motion detection tab, let's maybe try and configure the object sizes. I'll reduce each by half and try again. Yeah, it is at least detecting a smaller amount of object motion, but it's really inconsistent. Maybe there's just not enough contrast? But yeah, even coming closer, it selects more and smaller objects, but very inconsistently and none of them are enough to trigger an actual alert. This will definitely take more investigation to figure out what's going on. But first, let's try a different tack. One of the big selling points of iSpy is the robust plugins available, both directly and from third parties. Supposedly, there is a plugin that will actually detect human faces. That would be very slick and make up for a lot of smaller pain points. Pain points like the fact that there's no way to install a plugin from within iSpy. It's the same, download a zip file and extract it in the proper place, just like VLC. That's just silly. I download the zip file, extract it, and restart iSpy. Now, how to use it? It's not in the motion detection dropdowns. Maybe in alerts? Ah, there it is in the mode. I'm not sure what else needs to be set at this point, so let's go with the defaults again. In this test, I'm going to walk backwards so that it doesn't see my face until I'm up close. And... huh. Is it recognizing my face? How would I know? It doesn't look like it. It's not doing anything else when I'm farther away. I guess I have to consider this test a failure. It clearly needs some kind of configuration beyond the defaults. I'll put that off for now and maybe come back to it later.
Any security camera solution to me must have an app, must be remotely viewable, and most critically, must be able to alert me when there's an intruder. So let's start with iSpy Connect. Hmm, a free account implies only local LAN access. And yeah, I need to upgrade to enable remote access and mobile access. That's not promising. $8 a month? Are you kidding me? That's getting into Nest Aware territory and A, Nest Aware gives you far more features than just remote access and B, even Nest Aware is much too expensive. This is just, wow, wow. The focus on SMS alerts is worrisome too. I better find that iPhone app. Hmm, that's an ancient screenshot of what appears to be a website. So what's this? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Is the app just a mobile view of the website? That is absolutely unbelievable in 2017 and 2018. Having just a mobile formatted website is something you'd kind of expect back in 2007 when the iPhone didn't yet have an app store. This is the definition of a fatal flaw to me. $8 a month to get access to a website with no app and no push notifications is just so outrageously bad that it doesn't even matter what other features that they have. That's a completely unworkable solution. So to sum up, iSpy may well be a viable solution if you're running Windows and don't want to pay a penny for security camera software and are okay with not having any remote access at all. If you do require remote access though, then I can't imagine why anybody would be okay with paying that price when there's just as good or better solutions out there without that monthly charge. I'll finish with Blue Iris, the 800 pound gorilla of the DIY security camera software world. It is the benchmark that all others are held to. It's not open source like the other two though. I paid $60 for the Windows software and $10 for the iPhone app for a total of 70 bucks. Here's a fresh non-demo version. Thank you, random instructions, for telling me how to add a camera. That's actually not obvious. Standard stuff to start. I do want to enable motion detection, and since Blue Iris can use a ton of CPU, we'll also default to direct to disk recording. Let's try the automatic route. Searching, searching. There's our Turtle Yard camera. And it's properly discovered. I don't know if that password is correct or not, so I'll just put in my setup password. Let's just leave everything else as is to see how well it works. It's promising so far. Let's try the trigger tab first. Oh, what the heck. Let's highlight both the motion and the object rectangles. Okay, those look like handy object settings to tweak later during optimization, but we'll stick with the defaults to start. Maybe show five seconds of footage taken before an alert. That's always handy. Man, there are a lot of choices for alerts. I do like that they directly call out to push notifications. That's a very promising sign. I don't yet have the app, but let's enable it now anyway. Yeah, that's good enough for now. Let's see what we have. Well, that was by far the easiest camera edition that I've done so far. That literally could not have been more painless. I did forget to set up a zone earlier, so let's do that next. And see, iSpy? Camera properties is what you should call the camera properties. Let's see, trigger, and then configure the motion detection. There's the zones config I missed the first time around. iSpy did at least make that a bit more obvious. But first, I'm now noticing how one bit of the UI is flashing whenever there's movement in the live view. I bet that makes optimization a lot easier later. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, default zone covering everything. But let's start from scratch again. I have a choice of either rectangles like iSpy or a brush. So let's get the bulk of the zone filled in with the rectangles. Easy peasy. Okay, then I'll switch to the brush to fill in the non-square details. Yeah, that was simple. So does it work? It's testing time. Well, it does detect me farther away with the default settings. And sure enough, it even triggers the alert earlier than either iSpy or ZoneMinder with their defaults. I did see that one setting about cancelling shadows, but it's definitely seeing my shadow here, so that needs more investigation. And there's my event in the clip browser. And would you look at that? It just shows the event without me having to download any extra bits of software or do esoteric configs. 
Amazing! <laughs> okay, sarcasm aside, I do see a lack of a timeline graph like both Zoneminder and iSpy had that visually shows the intensity of the detection. That's not critical, but that's still a little bit unfortunate. Things are going pretty swimmingly so far, so let's move on to the start of the remote access via the website. I'll put off breaching my firewall for now, otherwise that all looks good. Let's make sure our user has a password though. Later, I'll definitely be creating dedicated remote users with unique names and very hard passwords. Okay, fire up Chrome and go to the local IP and port. Nice! Hi! Okay, pretty straightforward. There's no mention of any subscriptions or fees or anything, so it's looking like a remote website will be trivial. But that's not my primary concern. What I really need is access via my iPhone. So I go and pay the $10.77 after tax for the app. It wants me to enter in the first and last digits for my license key. You don't need to see that. After that, I just tap the Get IPs button and voila, it shows me the correct IPs. The username and password is the same one I made for the website. Again, I'll have changed this by the time you watch this video. I mean, it's far from the prettiest interface and they could really use a graphical designer. But it does look functional. Tap the camera icon and there it is, along with my previously recorded clip. Can I see myself being detected in real time on my phone? Sweet! And there's all my triggered alerts. So all that I'm missing is my push notification whenever there's an alert. That would be a blue iris config rather than a camera config. Sure enough, my mobile device automatically shows up now that I synced with the license key. So let's enable push notifications. Wait, what's this? Ha! Huh, I can geofence using my phone! <laughs> that's, that's too cool! Okay, that, that's for later though, that's not an essential feature. That's, that's just gravy. Because right now, it's time for a critical test. Can I get an app notification on my iPhone when there's an alert? Dun dun dun! Triggered... And BAM! There's my notification! Yes! That's precisely what I've been looking for all along. This is too too cool. And here we are! It's rare that a comparison has such an obviously clear winner. Zoneminder is just too esoteric for anybody but diehard Linux aficionados. iSpy lacks the polish of Blue Iris, has an unbelievable subscription requirement, and even worse, doesn't have an app. Seriously, what's up with that? Blue Iris though, it worked flawlessly from the start, mostly even with the default settings. Everything I asked it to do, it did. What more can you ask? Well, okay, yeah, it does cost 70 bucks. But considering that you paid likely hundreds or even thousands of dollars for the cameras, that's not a really high price point. Plus, it is cheaper than even a year's subscription to iSpy. That's money well spent. And as always, thanks for watching.